Mark Chaikin, founder of Chaikin Analytics, and of course has seen many of these Santa Claus rally and January effects come into play, Mark. So what do you see going into seasonality? Do you pl kind of play into this? What are you seeing, Mark? Mark? Well, the seasonality trade is over, basically. It started uh, the end of November, and uh, we're witnessing the... Uh, the rewards from being a bull. Uh, the last two days to me are meaningless. Uh, what's important is what's going to happen in January because uh, Yale Hirsch's biggest um, call back in the 70s was uh, whatever the market does in January is a roadmap for the rest of the year. So first five days are up. That means that 25% of the year is going to be up in the beginning and so forth. So I think January is really important. And I'm very bullish on January because of the earnings um, season uh, announcements that are due to come. That's truly interesting. Of course, we'll be watching the first quarter as uh, normally presidential cycles in the first quarter see a little bit of a slowdown, especially on election year. Um, and I don't know. I mean, with this rosy and market environment, are we going to see a little bit of a slowdown? It seems like stocks just want to keep running. Do you feel like the strength can just continue into next year, Mark? Oh, yeah. I, I have a year on target or you know, a, a goal that I'll share at the end of the broadcast, but it's it's numbers that you haven't been speaking uh, unless you're Jeremy Siegel, you know, mm. 10 years ago. But basically, I, there are so many people like uh, you and Dennis out there saying, be cautious, you know, don't jump on the ball, wait for mm -hmm. a pullback. I think the most you're going to, not most, but the likely pullback in the S&P is one and a half to 3%. I'll say that almost any time we're in an uptrend. Uh, the 21-day average, which is typically support in an uptrend, is 46.75. Uh, it's quite a bit away. Uh, but that, that equates to around a 3% pullback. But I think you did key in on one important thing, RSP, not SPY. The RSP went from being down 5% on October 30th to being up uh, Twelve percent on the year, so that's a seventeen percent swing since October thirtieth in the average stock in the S and P. At the same time, as you point out, there's been a little bit of profit taking in the Magnificent Seven. So, I think uh, rather than looking at the Dow, I agree with Dennis. It's it's too constrained. Although the Dow did make a new high ahead of the S and P, uh, the the cap weighted S and P. So, the rally is broadening out. And then the question is what sectors are going to do well in 2024 in an election year after a big rate um, cut, not rate cut, but cut back in rate cycle. And, you know, I've got some thoughts there, too. So, you know, shoot, fire yeah. away. Let's, what let's... about, so, and what I've been talking about is the leaders becoming laggards and the laggards becoming leaders for 2024. What we saw in 2023 was a complete reversal of what was happening in 2022, where January, the calendar changed and they could not stop buying tech stocks and they bought them all year. To Hirsch's point, the first five days of January, I believe, are very strong. And that did continue the entire year. I mean, it's been a big move here for some of the small caps, but they have massively underperformed over the last mm -hmm. couple of years here. Um, I, I've been saying, I think that's where I'm looking to buy pullbacks is more in these value names, as opposed to if we get a little dip and, you know, a, a 32 multiple Microsoft, I'm, I'm not sure I'm jumping in and chasing. I, I, I believe the AI story is real. I believe those stocks are still going to do fine. I'm kind of with you in that. I think there's this potential for some of these other stocks, which are trading, you know, and, and when we were talking about this back in October, I mean, we're just getting down to multiples on some stocks where they haven't traded in years back in October, where, you know, you got the IWM was, I think, trading 13 or 14 times yep. earnings. I mean, just stocks is main, just mainly getting too cheap when we got back to October, which is why, you know, we talked about in October of saying, it, I think a recession is kind of priced in at this point in time. Now, I didn't anticipate this huge 20% up move in a lot of stocks and in and, and the IWM overall. I mean, what are we up, you know, in the IWM from you know, the October lows, 160, 204? Yeah, we're talking, you know, almost 20% move there as well. I do think, you know, you could get a pullback. I would be a buyer of that pullback. So I knew I know we talk cautiously to our investors, but we started talking more bullish back in October. So to, to your point here, Mark, 
do do you think this leader to laggard laggard to leader trade could have weight in 2024 Oh, very definitely. I think tech will do okay, not the biggest names, but the companies that are going to use AI to improve the productivity of their software stocks like ServiceNow and Synopsys. Uh, you know, so I think I've been saying all along that the big, um, what we used to call the generals, NVIDIA, Microsoft, th that's not where you're going to make your big money in AI. You're going to, uh, there's a productivity cycle going on where uh, profit margins are going up because companies are using things like AI. Uh, so I think those, let's call them secondary tech stocks, uh, Arison Networks, another example of that, um, CrowdStrike, are going to do pretty well. But I think um, the real areas to watch are clearly financials. So uh, I like to step back and, and just, I could quote 10 different patterns and events that have happened that tell me this this market's going uh, 5,800 to 6,000 in a best case scenario next year. And that's, you had a very steep um, drop in rates in a very short period of time. So as we've always talked about, and you guys have talked about, it's the rate of change of interest rates that's really the driver in the stock market, not the level. So from 5% down to 3.8% in a month and a half or two months, that's amazing. And uh, Goldman Sachs has something called the Financial Conditions Index. And that had a, has had a precipitous drop, which means that the, there's easing in the marketplace, not by the Fed, because they're still selling bonds, but by the market participants. 12 months later, the market's up every time that's happened, where you've had such a steep drop in interest rates and other conditions that they measured. The second thing is that chart you showed of the IWM, you recycled from a new 52 week high to a new 52, new 52 week low to a new 52 week high in an amazingly short period of time. Unreal. And that typically has led to hundred percent up gains, you know, uh, seven out of seven times that that's happened six to 12 months out. So the longer term picture, and by that, I mean six to 12 months is fabulous for the market. And then you had a point and figure breakout at 4,600. You know, not many people look at point and figure charts anymore. But so 3,500 low to 4,600 high gives you a 5,700 target. And that's just coming off a machine. That's, you know, if you look at any point and figure software, whether it's stockcharts.com or what have you, there's the count right there. In fact, the count is 58.99. I don't know, but it's based on a breakout of a double top at, uh, on November uh, 20th. So we're set up. Where do you look? Financials, yeah. big beneficiary, industrials, consumer discretionary for sure. And I think you avoid energy and I think you sort of underweight mega cap tech and you overweight uh, specialty tech, and that's where you talk about specialty tech. Which stocks? Give us a couple picks well, here. What I mentioned, uh, they look high right now. ServiceNow, Synopsys, Pure Storage, PSTG. Uh, they're a big. They have a deal with Nvidia. They're a big beneficiary of the need for flash storage. Uh, so. A company like Procore, which we've mentioned here before, PCOR, they're the only competitor to Autodesk out there, and they're starting to integrate AI into their uh, software for construction management, construction project management. So you can find these names in both software. I'd rather go to software than hardware here, but if I had to pick a chip manufacturer, it would be AMD, which is making new 52-week highs. So there, there's plenty to choose from here. I do think that you're going to get a pullback at some point. I can't tell you when, uh, but you've had a magical run, and that's not a reason to be bearish. The McClellan Oscillator has been in positive territory for two months. That only happens at the start of a new bull leg. So you've got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, let me give you one anecdotal answer. I like anecdotal if it translates to, okay, you know something that someone doesn't know. I was watching before I came on air. Mm -hmm. I forgot that I hadn't reordered my Stock Traders Almanac. Two, <laughs> two clicks on Amazon, and it's being delivered this afternoon. That's unreal, eh? So hey, what, what does that mean? 
It means I'm not using as much gas and I'm not putting as much mileage on my cars. It's a productivity enhancer, bad for, you know, the conventional uh, bricks and mortar, bad for energy, but great for Amazon, great yeah. for anybody who's looking to maximize the experience. And that's what AI is all about. So, our all right. So, of course, uh, the chat here also saying that uh, they're seeing they're feeling the bullishness. Right. Um, what can throw a wrench in this story, uh, Mark, next year? Is it that the Fed maybe steps back a little bit on their comments that they just came out? Or is there something that could break in the economy? What are you seeing out there? Uh, well, there's always something that could happen, but the problem is we never know what it is. So that's, yeah. you know, if we knew what it is, the market discounts it. That's the, that's the conundrum you always have. So what could go wrong? Um, the war in the Middle East could escalate into World War III, unlikely to happen, but Iran's a bad actor and, and they're getting frisky. Um, earnings could get too strong. And the, I, I, I personally am not basing my, uh, forecasts on what the Fed is like, how many rate cuts there are. There may be none. Who knows? But the market's pricing in, I don't know, six rate cuts now, not three or four based yeah. on... It was all the Powell conversation. Yeah. I mean, that's where I said, you know, the same thing. I'm like, you can't stay bearish if Powell is going to get behind this market. Right. And if he's and... going to start cutting rates when the markets that are out to all-time highs, it's very hard to be bearish here. That's why we've been yeah. on the bullish train here just, yep. you know, to correct you, Mark, because I know you think we're all bears here, but it's not. No, no, trading. I get, I get the trading rhythm, and and yeah. I respect that. I can't do that very well. I'm just, yeah, but we're on the same side as you for 2024. Yeah. I mean, well, Powell. I said you cannot fight the Fed, mm -hmm. and that is why it's been successful to have an underweight in equities. Really, for the last two years, we haven't gone nowhere in equities for two years because you were fighting the Fed as they were cutting rates. Now it would have been nice to all, you know, go bullish here. You know, in, in October of last year, and you know we'd be right at the bottom. But you know, there was a significant sell-off in the queues. There was a significant yeah. sell-off in another sell -off. All right, the the explosion in the number of stocks making new highs, the contraction in the number of stocks making no uh, new lows down to three or four. Yeah. And what people don't realize is this is a rolling fifty-two week number. What mm -hmm. happens in March when the lows that the bank stocks made? Uh, go off the board. I mean, okay. the odds of new lows picking up here, I'd rather look at what's going to go right. And the, you're going to have an explosion in all these technical indicators. First of all, the, uh, the advanced decline line made a new high ahead of the S&P. That is the most bullish thing that can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and you still haven't made a new closing high in the S&P. Uh, the Dow leading the S&P is bullish. So it, it's hard for me to zero in on what could go wrong. I think you got to zero in on what could go right. We started doing that in November and it's it's really paid off for people who have believed in this bull market. And I think this is a new leg of the bull market that's just started. Well, it might just be getting started because I just want to give perspective because everybody is still thinking like this, it's just been an amazing run for stocks in 2024 absolute, or 2023 absolutely has. But what we did in 2023 was basically get most of the losses back from 2022. So when we really give perspective here, in two years, in two years, QQQ is flat. In two years, the S&P, I believe, is just trying now to get back to all-time highs. So, I mean, it's taken two years. So we've had a two-year bear market, um, even though it was one, all losses were in one year. It was the last year that got it back. So I think Mark's got a point here. Like, you know, we've had the huge sell-off with the Fed, with inflation, you know, and the Fed fighting inflation. They brought interest rates back up. And now we've come full circle and we've got, and maybe we have clear skies here. Um, if the Fed is going to start lowering rates, I think, you know, you've got to now think that, hey, maybe the bear run is officially over and maybe we're not going to retrace these lows if you're sitting on the bear camp. So, so he, here's, what, here's what could go wrong. Uh, it's a good question, Mitch. Uh, the March Fed meeting, they don't lower rates. Now you're going to have some disappointment in the bond market. That's the, the bond market's been driving the bus. I'm sure you guys have been talking about that for the last month. Yeah. Not and so. so if the Fed does not cut interest rates because the economy is stronger than expected in March, then you'll get a sell off, uh, you know, and that that makes sense. And, you know, uh, the reason I think we sell off, if we sell off, and I'm not saying that happens, but if you're giving the bearish scenario, it's if inflation starts ticking higher again. 
because it's, if inflation starts to tick higher again, the Fed will back off on their commentary from before. Yeah, the market exactly. is very scared of inflation. So that's kind of the boogeyman. Inflation has to stay down. If we start ticking yeah. higher again, the bull thesis starts to get holes. In it. So here's what you watch for that. That's a really good point. China, if China's China's economy is in the crapper, this rally you talked about is just a short covering year end rally uh, because of the uh, implosion in the uh, Chinese real estate market. So if Ch China, the growth in China actually drives the inflation rate. It, it drives the stuff that you know supply chains depend on. If China stays weak, there is virtually no chance that inflation ticks up. Virtually none. And you know the, the PPI definitely follows the Chinese economy. Uh, I mean, the, the correlation is unbelievable. So if producer prices are going to come down, the supply chain issues that COVID created, uh, you know, finally abate, which is what's happening here. Um, I just don't see an uptick in inflation, uh, and I'm not an economist, fortunately. So, you know, I'm not stuck with some numbers that are archaic, like uh, yield curves and, and leading indicators. So we've covered a lot of ground. That's about three weeks worth of my thinking. <laughs> we missed we missed a week, but I would like to wish you guys and all of the loyal viewers who uh, are in here every other week, you know, because hopefully I have something important to say. I wish you a happy, healthy, peaceful New Year's. And please vote. Whatever your political leanings are, vote, mm -hmm. vote, vote in 2024 so that your voice is heard. Love it. Love it, Mark. And uh, just from uh, all of us here, and I'm sure the audience would agree also, thank you for joining us. Like always, it's truly been an honor to have you on the show because uh, as someone that, you know, studies Legendary markets, investor, Mark Chaikin. Yeah, literally. I, I mean, I there's I can tell you I there's like at least five or ten books back there that have your name in it. So I can tell you that I definitely enjoy uh, being able to speak with you uh, throughout the year. I know the chat loves it. So a lot of love for you. A lot of thanks in the chat. Have a great year next year, Mark. We expect great things from you in 24. And I'll actually be on on January 4th because we missed a beat. Oh, so, excited. We'll, we'll, we'll see, see you, you right, right in the middle of the new right year. Right in the middle of this. Yeah, that'll be great. Enjoy, Thank guys. You. Have a great one. Take care, Mark.